Hello and welcome to Developmental Neurobiology. I'm Dr. Ahmed Abdelal and I look forward to working with you this semester. Um, and I'm going to go over the syllabus and have an overview of the class. And after that, we'll, um, I'm going to record the, uh, the video uh, for the class in a different video. So both of them will be short, <coughs> hopefully. So the goal of this class is basically to understand the neurology aspect, to understand the brain, and to understand the kind of the physiology, the functions of the brain as well. And not just in general terms, because you could go very deeply into things. And there are many technical things that have to do with the brain and anatomy and all of this. <coughs> Our goal here is to focus on the most relevant aspects of brain anatomy and physiology that will apply to what we do as educators, as allied health professionals. So we are not going to be kind of too heavy on the anatomy piece. Um, as you will see in the, in, the, in the first class, I am going to provide an overview of the nervous system and the mechanism that we will be focusing on on the brain and on basic functions and basic structures of it. So then we will be speaking about the development of how the brain develops and the purpose. Why, you know, does it develop and how the environment shapes the brain and how experiences shape uh, the, the nervous system generally and enable us to form networks that will enable us to function the way that we do as human beings. So I'm just going to highlight some parts. You have the syllabus already and um, take some time to read it. And please post any questions you have um, email me and um, I'll be happy to, to get back to you as soon as I can. So this will be, uh, this is a class that's 100% online. And I will be posting videotape uh, lectures uh, weekly. I am trying to make it as, as similar to face-to-face -face as possible. And... Um, one of the ways is to just to you know to post the recorded uh, lecture and then we'll have some basic questions that i'll post uh, you will have a quiz um, every week you'll have a quiz online we'll uh, use uh, also videos and um, powerpoint slides uh, chapter summaries and so on in terms of textbooks, uh, the one that we are going to kind of rely on for most of the class is the first reference the, by Johnson and Hahn. The other two are recommended. They are both, you know, excellent books. And we'll be using um, some, I mean, some of the chapters in, in the course. And then... A lot of the material also comes from <clears throat> a, a foundational book of um, neuroscience uh, by Eric Kandel, who's a Nobel Prize winner. He's, he's considered the greatest neuroscientist um, today. And um, his book is taught in the medical schools around the country. It's called Principles of Neural Science. Some of you might be familiar with it already. So what I do is I take particular chapters that are relevant to us, 
and I summarize them and I post the summary for you. If you would like to go to the original chapter, you are very welcome to do so. Uh, there are many ways you can uh, purchase access online, but this is a book that's basically 1700 pages. Uh, but I, um, I can diffuse the chapters that relate to us again. The summary should be sufficient. And then you have the slides. Uh, my goal is to stay away from technical things. Like when you read um, a chapter in this book, it goes into very minute details about structures and, and hormones and um, amino acids, all kinds of things. But we would like to make this course um, as close to application as possible to, to connect it on a, a, the current theme. The frequent theme is to go back and connect it to what, to what we are doing, whether as, as, as uh, members of the society, as educators, as students, as clinicians, to, to real life experiences. So we are going to have all this material. There will be articles as well and uh, studies that are posted um, as they become relevant and you know to the course material that we will discuss. So in the end, when we go to the schedule grid, you notice that I emphasize that it is tentative because as I continue, you know, to um, we continue to, to 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 build up the course week by week, you are going to have new material coming in, and um, I almost daily I go to um, scientific journals and look for new studies, new articles coming up. So if anyone has. Um, uh, learning disability and need needs accommodations please um, email me and i would need to have a written letter from our um, academic achievement center in terms of the accommodations mostly they have to do with timing and there's nothing timed here um, the assignments in terms of paper you know papers and, and research um, we have specific deadlines but if there is a disability that makes it hard for you to submit things by their due dates, we can work together. Uh, but I, I must have a letter of accommodations from the Academic Achievement Center. Um, attendance is, is very important. Participation online is, is very important. And when someone doesn't contribute to the discussion board or submit assignments on time that is considered absence so please be mindful and um, if there's anything that makes it difficult or something that as an emergency that comes up uh, please let me know in order to make the class consistent the you know all of us have um, jobs and our kind of our lives are busy and I've found over the years that if you keep uh, a particular system, a particular time where you do things, then people can ar ar arrange their schedule based on that. So I be we begin the class on Monday and Monday morning at eight o'clock, the agenda will be available. Uh, assignment due dates and everything, all the material uh, will be available and everything is due um, by Sunday, 11.59 Sunday, 11.59 p.m. midnight. And except for one thing, it is the discussion board, your first contribution to the discussion board. So this week, this is a, uh, we, we don't have a particular topic where I ask you to comment on, but you just post your first assignment, which is the self introduction. And then you by Wednesday midnight, and then you comment on um, all your colleagues comments just to get to introduce yourself to, you know, your colleagues and they introduce themselves to you. Uh, one of the greatest advantages is that we have a small class for the time being. Um, there are many people waiting to get into the 
uh, certificate, but the paperwork takes a little bit of time. And so now it's a good opportunity for us to, you know, to kind of get to know each other and um, because we'll be working together for the next uh, three or four months. So I'll speak more about the discussion board activities later. So this way, again, consistently Monday, you are going to have the materials and you continue working towards um, the assignments and the folders will be open. You can post anytime until the, you know, the deadline, which is um, Sunday midnight. So the introduction, which is the first assignment, the purpose of it is to introduce yourself to, uh, to everyone. Uh, and to speak about, you know, for example, your background, education, uh, health, uh, um, allied health or um, administration, whatever your background is, your educational background, professional background, work experiences. How do you find the class um, connecting with what you do and how do you find it connecting with your academic um, and professional goals? so that this way we must keep in mind all the time uh, you know an image of our goal where we would like to be and how will this class enable us to get there and of course this will help me too so that i can continue as i shape the class this is a we are teaching it for the first time as i continue to teach the class of course your experiences will help me and uh, in terms of shaping it, focusing more on things that are most important uh, to you. There will be uh, 12 quizzes online, and the quizzes are simple, basically based on the um, video tape lecture, based on the readings, just to make sure that, you know, we continue to be update with the material and and do the the readings so we can get the results that we are looking for from the class um the quizzes are not timed and you can kind of continue working on them until the due date which is again sunday midnight the discussion board <coughs> is a way for us to make up for the lack of face-to-face -face interaction. So we have a forum. I post, based on the material on the theme of the week, I post a, a, a question. That purpose of that question is to enable you to integrate what you learn, you know, the content with what you do. And by doing so, it enables you to kind of look at the material, look at the content critically, and then look at ways to apply it. Because the whole purpose, again, of this is applications. It is a lot of neuroscience research over there, but a lot of it is not applied, unfortunately. And we would like to learn through this process, through this, you know, grad program. We want to be experts in going to these sources taking them kind of digesting them thoroughly understanding them and finding ways to apply them and coming up with new strategies that is a frontier that needs many many people and um, again we cannot modernize education or clinical practice if we do not draw upon this um, knowledge that we have already available and and unfortunately the scientists can only do this much they can go and do experiments they can come up with their research but another set of professionals you know they have to come in and take that and go through it and show us how to apply it to what we do and this is again how we modernize how we keep up um, our practices with the, the the new research so the discussion board 
we'll have we'll start with a forum and uh, it will have a prompt a particular question and then look at, as you look at, at the material and at the lecture you kind of respond to that forum and then you need to use evidence to support your points because it has you know critical analysis problem solving you put your views and so on but you need to kind of substantiate what you say <clears throat> with evidence from research you could look for a research paper and say okay this author says or this study found that blah 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 and you know this means so it would just make us more focused and gives credibility to what we say so that we um we kind of also become focused on the idea that we look for golden standards i say to myself there is a lot of folk um neuroscience out there i don't call it neuroscience but a lot of um fads and a lot of commercial uh, commercialization that that kind of claims to, to to be based on neuroscience when there are so many myths associated with it uh, my idea is if i can present it at oxford or at harvard i will have it as part of my course i will have it as part of my um clinical i mean my certificate program otherwise if i cannot produce substantial evidence i am not going to make a statement or a conclusion um, that could be um, that could not be supported <clears throat> so then once you make your contribution and support your point by citing you know at least one study or uh, one book or one source then you go and um, comment or respond to at least two comments by your colleagues by two different colleagues the purpose of this is a discussion but the, so the minimum is that you go to the postings of two different colleagues and comment on them critically and um so you can engage in discussion and then after that you can there is no limit to how many times you contribute it is actually encouraged and you know it would be great if you continue to contribute more through the discussion so it will be a real discussion not just a, a homework assignment that you need to do and just get away you know get get it out of the way so the initial response to to the forum is worth eight points and then your responses to your colleagues um, each one is worth six points so every time that every week the discussion board is worth 20 points you can post in your uh, discussion if you find an interesting video that relates to the point you can uh, post the link to it uh, you can post um, links to articles uh, studies and so on so these are the discussion board guidelines i will in addition to having them on the syllabus the same directions will be available consistently on the on the discussion board itself so that you go you know to kind of keep yourself refreshed but they will be exactly the same week by week it might be boring to have them like this every week but i'd like them to be there so you can can refresh your mind um it's important that the posts have to be uh postings have to be substantial so the minimum limit is, is 100 point 150 points and then you can go up so but if you give me a comment that is like 300 points it's still one comment that is worth um for example eight points or six points so each comment is by itself it is counted separately and um i would um how i do it is i would open a discussion i mean um, a, a word file and i hope please make a folder for everything that you all your assignments so if something happens you know you can just go back and upload it 
Um, so I keep that folder and then in, I open a file. I could just call it discussion board activities. So I start writing it on the, this, on, on the word file. And then I finish highlight everything and then look at the word count and then click to copy. And then when you go on Blackboard, you, you just click on reply. And that opens that window for you to post. So all you do is click on control and V and it's going to post your comment. It is not going to work with the mouse. I don't think it does. So you just press control and V and it will put your comment there and then just make sure it's the way that you want it, how it is formatted and so on. And then you can um, click, make sure to submit um, after you, after you paste. But the thing that is, that is not good is if you make it as an attachment, an attachment is not going to make, to be conducive to, to the flow of the discussion. As I am commenting, for example, as I am looking and, and so on, um, I need to find, to see your comment in front of me so I can keep going back and forth to it. But if I have to have an attachment, download it and look at it, it just doesn't make it, um, it doesn't make it friendly as far as the discussion goes. So here, there are three major assignments. First is a research uh, project, is, it's a literature review. The literature review has three parts. You go to a, do some search. Like, let's say, for example, if you go to sciencedirect.com, it's good. This engine has so many um, journals, scientific journals, and, you know, neuroscience and so on. And then you put something. Let's say, for example, just randomly, effect of lead on brain development. And then you just, you are going to have a, many, many studies listed. But you are going to find not all of them pertain to lead and, uh, and brain development. So you sift through and you can narrow your search to the most recent three years or four years or five years. You can narrow it based on is it, are you looking for, you know, children? Are you looking for humans and so on on the left, on the left side? And after that, you do your title search. You look by the name of the study. When you identify a number of studies based on that, you can download them, of course, to your USB or your computer. And then that is your title search. You have found studies and titles that pertain to your topic that you would like um, to do the, that you are, you plan to do the, um, the review on. Then when you click on when you start to read the article itself, you begin with the abstract. So from the abstract, you might determine, oh, this is too technical. This is not something I'm looking for. And you discard the study. So you, you keep go, you know, reading the abstract. This is the abstract search. So by reading the abstract, you have a kind of a more, um, you have an idea, a more accurate idea about if this study fits within the topic that you are working on. And then you take all of these studies, at least 10 of them, and list them. You are going to find, I'm going to post online, an organizational chart. It basically, on the left side, is going to have a, mar a um, column for the study itself the author and the, the name of the study and the dates and so on. And then it's going to have other columns where you put, if it's a study, how many subject, how, I'm sorry, how many participants in the study there were, uh, wh what country was it done, 
and um, the, you know things like that. And then on the right column, you are going to have a, a a place where you summarize the results of the study in one sentence or three sentences, very short. And then you have all your studies now there organized alphabetically. When you go and write your paper, you you start with these ideas just like as an organizer. It makes things really easy. However, when you start your paper, you want to make it as a paper. You are not going to make it separate so that, you know, okay, here's article one or study number one. It says blah, blah, blah. Too. No, you want to make it a cohesive piece of research. You want to to have it as a discussion of the topic. For example, going back to the uh, lead on brain development, you start with an introduction and say, you know, for example, about the facts, about lead and why it causes problems with brain development. And for example, um, just giving a general introduction and then you go into the particular details and you go take the studies based on what they address and you prioritize the each one into a theme and then you continue to just make something that's coherent and flowing as a paper so that will be and and if you would like to know i mean i'm sure you already know but if you like to refresh your mind or you can just take any of these studies all of them are going to have a literature review and you see how they they focus the topic by <clears throat> taking everything that these studies that they look at <clears throat> address and then making it into a discussion about that particular topic and then identifying in the end the gap in the research and so on so that you start with that that first piece you do i make a title for your um, literature review. Let's say, for example, uh, the effect of lead on uh, brain development. That's a topic that I could, for example, take. And then I find my studies and, and say, you know, write an introduction and then go and say, okay, one of the effects is uh, blah, blah, blah. And I cite a particular study that one of my studies I reviewed. And then another effect is and, and you keep going so that you, until you, you, you know, complete your, um, and I will be posting guidelines also in addition to that. So then the second part is to actually write your review itself. And then you, do a presentation powerpoint presentation that you narrate or if you have means to record it um, as a videotape that would be great and then you post that online and then when that happens um, you will also comment on the work of your colleagues you go and look at their study and you know give some kind of um, contribution in terms of what you think about the topic and so on and the goal for this particular presentation is to enable you to synthesize that stu the studies that you have you know all of these 10 or more studies to synthesize the topic that you focused on to be able to explain it to someone else and once you do that you own the information it becomes part of you so um, in that presentation, you are not going to contribute anything different than what's already in your um, review. Then you write a reflective paper. You choose a particular theme or topic in the, in the course by looking at the syllabus and seeing what we are covering by what we have already covered and so on. And you kind of write some your ideas your thoughts so this is not a, a research driven piece but it is a way for us to make sense 
of this material and how it relates to us. It brings us back to make us focus on our goal. What is my goal? Why am I in this class? Why, what do I do with this information? And where, where do I want to go? How does it make sense to me? And again, there will be guidelines for that and the grading rubric. Then the research paper um, is the other major project. The, by the way, the, the reflection, a reflective paper is about two to three pages, nothing big. It's kind of like you thinking out loud. The research paper and the presentation, again, um, this is something that you think about. You find a topic of your interest, as long as it belongs within the realm of the course. And you go and explore articles, books, resources that you have that you can find. And then you, you start with giving me a title and giving me uh, an outline. And the outline includes resources that you will be using. So first, um, when you go to Purdue OWL, that's, this is a great site, comes from Purdue University. And they take the American Psychological Association manual for writers of research, and they kind of make it into examples and th things that are um, hands-on. They give you examples of outlines. Uh, should you do it this way, that way? This is how you cite your resources in the middle of, uh, of your paper. This is how you list your references. We use, a, you know, the APA style formatting in, 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 the, in, in this uh, course. So make sure to do it. Once you do it a few times, it becomes um, second nature. Then you write your paper. And after that, you do the presentation so you can present it to us online. And uh, your colleagues will comment on it and uh, give you feedback. And then that will be, you know, this, the, the, that will be it for the major um, assignments in the class. Uh, your work as a grad student is expected to be error free. It's expected to be really, you know, outstanding in terms of writing. And I'm sure, you know, all of you are professional in terms of writing as, you know, educators or clinical professionals. Um, my tip is when you keep your writing like sentences short, the shorter your sentence is, the easier that you can control, that, that you can control it. And sometimes, you know, if you keep run on sentences and stuff, some ideas are complex, they might need that. But I find that the, the, as I keep my sentences shorter, it is easier for me to control them in terms of grammar. Uh, this is a, this are the, the, the grade distribution for the class and anyone looking for having this course rolled into the grad certificate program, uh, you need a minimum of a B minus. And actually to use it for any grad program, they, they typically require a B minus for a grad course that that's considered the, the passing grade. So this is a, the, the schedule for the, for the class and the assignments. Um, there will be modifications as we, as we go. These are just general highlights. I just wanted you to know that as we keep uh, going week by week, there will be modifications. A lot of readings might come up, uh, things that are exciting and I'd like to, to make as, as part of the class. I definitely will, will add, but this is just a general guide for us. The last uh, class we have will be April 30th. So please email me with any questions about um, the syllabus. And I hope that we have a, a great semester together. And um, I, I am not going to be contributing to your discussion board. I'm just going to kind of go and look and see. And, you know, unless there's some gross distortion of 
some information or some uh, conclusions that need me to jump in and, and clarify. Otherwise, uh, the discussion board is, is for you to, to engage in. So in the next uh, lecture recorded, uh, I'm going to uh, speak about br um, brain uh, structures and function in a very, very broad way so that we know as we begin next week speaking about the development of the brain and the nervous system, we know at least what we are focusing on. So thank you, and it's a pleasure to have you in the course, and I look forward to working with you. Thanks.